So on this side is the block, the block map, which will show you, and then it arrows in into where the different significant sites are um, in the area. It's pretty cool. So there's different homesteads. There's Marae. Um, there's one of the lakes that are just over the back there. And a bit more history about not only the site, but the whole area. And then on this side are photos of the whole family. But the whare is, has become almost like a, yeah, just to house all that information. So it's not just a physical whare, it's almost like a concept. So um, this whare here gave inspiration to the Tutamanawa project. So this was built um, probably, oh, I don't know exactly, but probably 15 plus years ago. And um, when the Tutamanawa project came, they really wanted, they took inspiration from here. It houses the stories that are important to this family and this area. And then um, Tutamanawa sort of added on to that by making it, it was about the river and about cleaning up the river and bringing that, not only the families, but the whole wider hapu back to that site. And the sites were chosen because they were quite significant. So like this one. They had a visit here um, probably five years before the Tutamanawa project started and they talked about it and carried it on for a number of years and then it sort of came together um, with the Tamanawa to Wai Fund and the, the opportunity arose to, to bring that um, dream, to, to bring that dream alive and incorporated all of the groups along the river which was made it a very big project but a really big impact. It was started in 2016 mm -hmm. so we're just at the end now we're in the last milestone which is um, ends in December I think yeah so it's but it was probably about two years prior took a, it was a lot of planning involved in that yeah two to Manawa bringing everyone together and standing in their own separate plate in their own separate sites, building the fadi as one. Then there's a the riparian planting and fencing. Then there's the um, cultural health and schmack monitoring, schmack kit, map monitoring. Um, there's the website where all the results will end up. Well, just for those ones, the building the fadi especially so lots of them you'll see today are quite close to the river. Um, some of them aren't on sort of council land or horizons land, they're on privately owned properties. So there was a lot of, there's a lot of coordination with um, resource consent and building consent. Most of them had a building exemption, building consent exemption. However, the one in Hokafitu, if you are ever uh, walking along the Manawatu River, by Hokapitu there you'll see it um, because it was in it was in a flood zone it had it, we had to do a lot more work with the council around that um, coordinating the riparian the fencing and the planting at the sites was more about working with the community um, accessing plants obviously through her, horizons and different nurseries so that was there was a lot of coordination around the, the right plants for the site because not every plant is going from Norswood all the way through to Foxen, they're quite different sites. So uh, we had to make sure with the plant engineers that we got the ones that were suited for that area. Um, the cultural monitoring is specific to the site, so we had to get specific training for that site. And they have different taonga species or different sentinel species that are important to that site as well. So it was working with um, scientists as well to make sure that we were doing um, work to improve that sentinel species in that area and not doing things that were going to make it worse. Um, so there was that. The website is where the results of those monitoring will end up. So that's taken two years and it's just about to go live. So that'll be on the Manawatu River page. So you'll be able to go on there and see what's happening at each site and the results and the work and the eff things that have been completed, things that are still to be completed and the ongoing efforts. The other half of the project is with landowner riparian planting and fencing. So through Horizons, they've got the landowners in and the project will pay half. 
and the landowner will pay half. So I think we've ended up with 40,000 metres of fencing this year and about 50,000 plants. So that's on privately owned property. So that was more, that was part of the project, but it was managed through Horizons.